365 Radio. It's time for our weekly segment with Grayson Grunthafer of Sikkim365.com. Brought to you by Pioneer Steel and Pipe, where customer service is their main focus and best in metal, steel, and pipe for large or small projects. With two locations in Waco and Bryan. Family owned and operated since 1943. Sikkim 365 Radio, Sam Kahn from TheAthletic.com. And a lot of that list that we discussed as far as Big 12 coaches hired since the conference was formed in 96. He'll join us. He was a part of that list with Max Olson putting that together. Uh, and Danny Cervantes, the head coach at Ellison today at 5, 445. We're now joined by Grayson Grunhafer, Sikkim365.com, the Bearcast with Craig Smoke every Tuesday. And, of course, analyst uh, for recruiting and has a big story out again about what they're doing. Grayson, thanks for your time. If we will start with the question, we've discussed this in the first hour. If you took we gave the top five, this was the, the, the athletic.com, Bob Stoops, Mac Brown, Paul, help me out. Lincoln Riley, Mike Gundy, and Mike Leach, top five since the Big 12 was formed. Would you move any of them up or down, or would you have somebody move into that list and take somebody out? Wow. Um, who, so I heard Gundy at number five. Who was number four? It's Stoops, Mac, Lincoln Riley, Mike Gundy, and Mike Leach. Ooh, you know what? I mean, this might be uh, a little bit of bias um, on my part. Uh, but but I do think that, you, I mean, I think you could make a case for both of the coaches, whether it be Art Riles or Matt Rule, uh, to be in that list, to be honest with you. And I know those guys that you mentioned accomplished a lot. Um, but, I mean, if you look at kind of what those two did, obviously the two Big 12 championships for Art and obviously what Matt Rule did, taking over a program that, I mean, frankly, guys, was – probably at the time worse than Kansas as far as what the roster looks like. I know Baylor has some advantages recruiting wise, but I think, I think that was as good a job as any. And, and truthfully seeing what Matt rule has done at Carolina, I think most Baylor fans would probably say if, if Matt rule is good at Baylor, um, Baylor would have just kept the train rolling, which is kind of what, you know, we're, we're hoping that is going to happen with Dave Rand over the next few years as well. All right, speaking of the train rolling, uh, June 1st, Grayson, the uh, the floodgates are open and recruiting is back on. How do you expect that to affect what Baylor has planned? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think they've had, well, I mean, it's been about three months to prepare for this. So you got to think that Baylor is definitely getting ready to try to take advantage of this opportunity, just like every school is. Obviously, Baylor made their two uh, official visit dates for a little bit later in the month, the 18th and the 25th, those two weekends in June. Um, but during the beginning of the week or the beginning of the month, you're going to see them do camps. And, and those camps are going to allow for a ton of evaluations, especially in the 2023 class. You'll see some 2022 offers as well. Um, but those camps are, are going to be so important. Uh, just knowing the way this staff works and the way the recruiting staff for Baylor works, it's very, very important for them to get guys on campus and be able to get true testing times and true measurements from these players. And you got to think, guys, I mean, they've been missing that opportunity for, uh, what, 15 months now? Um, so, so it's really a big deal for them to try to get these kids on campus and be able to really see kids in person and get to know what they're all about as well as getting the athletics and testing and measurements. Grayson, have there been any new names that have popped onto the radar, or are you still kind of uh, talking with mostly the the same sort of guys that Baylor's been in on for a while? Yeah, a lot of it has been the same guys. I know they've put out a couple offers. uh, Alessandro Lorenzetti, uh, he's a big 6'6", offensive lineman out of uh, Connecticut, and he's a guy who kind of, just jumped on the radar recently, got an offer from Baylor, and he's one who already has visits planned to Michigan State and Virginia Tech uh, for the 11th and 18th. Uh, but that 25th date is still open for him, so I'm wondering if Baylor might be able to get an official visit there. I know he hasn't decided yet, um, but I do know Baylor is one of the teams that's kind of in the running there. Obviously, they have a long list of offensive linemen that are going to be visiting uh, but it would be big to, to get another one on campus. You can never have too many options when 
you know, you're still trying to find probably three more offensive linemen. You need uh, all the possible options you can have. And then there was one more name uh, that I've talked to him a few times recently. He got an offer about 10 days ago. Um, but Jalen White, he's out of uh, uh, Parkview High School in Arkansas. And he's a kid who uh, he's got a decent offer list. He's still kind of trying to figure out his recruitment, I think, from a uh, just kind of thinking of it from how many more offers am I going to get? How big is my recruitment going to get? I still think he's waiting on figuring that part out. Um, but he did get an offer. I know that the Baylor staff, based on what they told him, view him as an NFL-type linebacker. Um, they think he has that kind of ceiling. So he's another one to keep an eye on. He still doesn't know if an official to Baylor is going to happen. He's got quite a few options on the table. Um, so we'll see if Baylor's able to seal the deal and get those two on campus. So, as you know, there was a report yesterday, and we discussed this uh, for the last couple of days, that the NCAA report might come out today. Beta was never informed of that yesterday, so that means it won't happen today unless it's the ultimate holiday weekend dump. How much has that played into effect when, when Coach Aranda and his staff are talking? How much negative recruiting are they facing on the road, and how much would it help just to know an answer, for God's sakes, at some point? Yeah, you know, I think – from a Baylor perspective, people that cover Baylor or people that are fans of Baylor, you probably sit there and go, man, I, I'm sure all these schools are going to use it to negatively recruit. I'm sure that they're going to take advantage of Baylor's situation. And I'm sure it happens. I mean, we've seen situations where it has, where it's impacted recruitment. But I, I will say that I think as time has passed, less and less of that has happened. And I, I do believe that the – the kids who Baylor's recruiting now are kind of detached from that situation. And you would hope that other schools aren't continuing to use it. I'm sure they do to some extent, but since it's been so long, I, I can't help but to think most schools are probably thinking, okay, well, uh, how are we going to negatively recruit if nothing's ever going to come of it? So uh, I think that's kind of where it's at. I don't think anyone has been able to really drastically shift recruitment in the past year. Um, but I will say before this past year, yeah, I mean, it happened multiple times. I'm sure once the penalties come down, depending on the severity, uh, then then you'll probably see it used a little bit more and you'll see recruits probably hear about it more. Um, but truthfully, Baylor just needs to get this, you know, behind them and be able to move on um, and be able to figure out what they need to do and what they're working with. And so I think that's the most important thing, honestly. And I would say that it, it's not playing a huge factor on recruitment at this very moment. Well, yeah, well, I would wonder what you'd even say at this point. I mean, year one and year two, you're probably, hey, it's coming down. It's coming down. You get to year five, and you're like, well, I'm, you, but what could you say if you're a coach? Like, you have, you would have no idea. <clears throat> yeah, you're, you're very you're very correct on that. I mean, what, what are you going to say? But, I mean, then on the flip side, uh, what was it? Three years after, three years after the investigation happened was when you saw uh, really a lot of the negative recruiting happen, and so that's the other weird part about it is you know what are these coaches saying? What are they using about the scandal to affect Baylor? And uh, you know a lot of these a lot of these coaches and a lot of these programs have clever ways of doing it. Um, but yeah, you're right. You would think, what are you going to say? Oh, they're going to get penalized in the next you know, months. Well, it's been what, six years. So it, it just is one of those things that it just seems like it's been lingering and Baylor's in, you need an answer, you know, other schools ends. It's just kind of like, well, we'll just use it until we can't anymore. Is how I think it, it's being utilized right now. Grayson, how do you feel about Baylor's uh, postseason chances in baseball? Where are you at? Yeah, guys, I, I mean, a lot of it is going to come down to what the rest of the country does. Obviously, you, you need, Baylor really needs a lot of those, all, really all of those one-bid conferences to only get one bid. Um, that's the first thing. You don't need any bubble team sneaking up and winning their conference championship. But from my perspective, as long as Kansas State and West Virginia don't win the Big 12 tournament, I think the committee is really going to be faced with a decision between Oklahoma and Baylor. And I truthfully think that's fair. I don't see how the number two RPI conference in the country should only get four teams. That just simply does not make sense to me. 
that would never happen in the SEC if they were the number two RPI conference. And so I don't think it should happen to the Big 12 in this instance either. Um, so now if you're coming down between Oklahoma and Baylor, well, Baylor's got the higher RPI, um, but Oklahoma beat them in a series very recently in, at, in Waco as well. And also Baylor hasn't been playing their best baseball, but you know you would hope that the committee can use a little bit of an eye test and say, listen, Baylor's missing their two top pitchers this past weekend, been dealing with a lot of injuries. You know, just give them a little bit of grace with that. Plus, their RPI is better. Their strength of schedule is better. And so, therefore, you know, guys, I've been leaning more and more towards I think they should get in as long as craziness doesn't happen because I think the Big 12 deserves five teams, and I think Baylor's the fifth best team in the Big 12. Well, and it, it may have helped them, although they lost two out of three to Oklahoma, that the Sooners went out one and two. I mean, they 